we are at Tropic Hideaway RV Resort in Foley, Alabama. Now, what I will say is this is a pretty small resort, but it's feature packed and it is in a great location. We have thoroughly enjoyed our stay here in Alabama. And honestly, if it were up to us, we'd probably extend it and stay just a little bit longer. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Tropic Hideaway. As you can see over to the right here, you do have a small water feature as you're pulling into the park. And as we make our way in, you can see that there's a variety of different site types in here. So they do have back-end back sites as well as pull-through sites. They are scattered throughout the park in different layouts and things like that, and we will show you all of it. So as we come up here on the right hand side, you can see that we do have a few pull through sites. These are the sites that are closest to the clubhouse area. As we make our way down, you can see the clubhouse here. It is what they call an open air clubhouse and it is a nice space to just come and enjoy we will show you that in the video here as well they've got a nice kitchen in there they've got the pool over here to the right they've got some covered seating as well they've got a mini golf course in addition to a fire pit area back here in the back So as we showed you, there were some pull-through sites up front. However, we do have a few pull-through sites tucked here in the back as well. So these particular pull-through sites are again, not as close to the action, but they are very uh, spacious in terms of actual sites. So this site that we're looking at right here is site number 1331. We have 1327. Uh, and these sites kind of go in a weird order, 1323. The site after that, again here, is 1315. So if you're looking at the map, you'll kind of have a gist for how these sites are, uh, but they are numbered a little bit oddly compared to some other site numberings that we've seen. This last site down here on the end is site number 1303. And again, this is a small park, so there's not a whole lot of sites in here. And we are here during the month of March. This is during spring break period. So there's not a lot of people that are here in the campground. There are quite a few activities that you can partake in around the area, but it's not necessarily the most kid friendly park um, compared to some others where we've stayed. So that is one thing to keep in mind. So this would probably be a good time for you to come to this specific park during spring break period, which again, we are here in mid-March. Now, as we make our way down here, you can see the sampling of back-end sites that are located in the property. This site we're looking at right now is number 1169. Then we have 1165. Then next to that, we've got 1161. So these are all going down incrementally in fours. So that just gives you a little bit of idea. These are not super long sites. They're not the smallest, but you can see an idea of how this Class C and their toad fit in the site, just to give you an idea of the spacing here. Now, I will give you another little uh, idea of kind of how the spacing shakes out as well, because I think it's important to know which parks have big rig, fr big rig friendly sites and which ones don't. So again, we got 1229 right here, uh, 1125, I'm sorry, that was 1129, 1125, 1121, and so forth. 
So we can see here we do have a Class A that's actually pulled into this site. You can see that we've got the whole vehicle, which I imagine is probably about 40 feet. They've got a trailer behind them, and they do have a FJ Cruiser that they park on this lot as well. So they're able to fit quite a bit in the site. It's a little bit of a tight fit in my opinion, but that is again just kind of how things shake out from a fit perspective. So this site here on the end, this is site number 1051. Then we have 1045 next to it. Then next to that, we've got 1039. So again, there's no <laughs> rhyme or reason to how these sites are uh, sequentially in the park. So that's one thing to keep in mind. But again, if you're looking at a map, you can get a good understanding for how this all shakes out. Here we have the second seating area with a fire pit. Really nice, perfect place to relax with your friends after a long day. And here we have the dog parks. There's two, one for small dogs perceivably, one for uh, big dogs. And there's little tiki huts to sit for the humans as well. And then you have two pickleball courts here, really nice for entertaining. And then you have area where you can sit and watch the tournaments take place. And then we have a fitness center as well. We've got two treadmills in addition to an elliptical and a stationary exercise bike. And I love their open air clubhouse. This is amazing because you have all of this seating area out here and one of the most luxurious outdoor kitchens. There is a television, all the things y'all, all the things. So this is really the entertainment center of this particular resort. Just take a look at it. It is beautiful and this backs right up to the pool as well. So really nice overall outlook. And you can see the pool area here. They actually have two individual pools of various depths. So here we have the laundry area. So they have several washers and several dryers. Only thing is the card reader's not working right now and there's a couple machines that are out of order. So this is probably the downside of this resort is that they haven't kept up on the laundry area. All right, y'all, we are in site number 1112, and this is a full hookup back in Outer Edge site. And one thing we didn't like about it that much is that it's not as spacious lengthwise as some of the other sites that we've stayed in. Now, you could tell that by the way that we parked in here, and just for reference, we have a F-350 dually and a 36-foot fifth wheel. So you can see here again, we've got a little bit of space from a width perspective, but the length is just where we were challenged. So you can see we've got our chairs out, we've got a picnic table here as well. So plenty of space to enjoy outdoors. Parking was really the only challenge that we experienced in this space. And as you can see, you've got plenty of space behind you in this area, so we don't back up to anyone. So that is very nice from a uh, spacing perspective. And when we look out our back window, we don't see anyone. So that's pretty fantastic as well. Now this is a full hookup site. So again, we do have the electrical connection. So we've got 50 and 30 amp here. No issues whatsoever with the power during our stay. We do have the sewer connection, good gravity. Everything worked out perfectly. And our water was great as well. Excellent water pressure. So no complaints on the utilities perspective. So that's it y'all, that's a review. If you enjoyed this, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, and until we see you on on the road again, please make sure you enjoy staying in the RV.